What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing an overview of the keychain. So before we get into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe, and let's jump right in. So for today's video, we need to create a project since we can't really deal with the keychain in a playground. And for those of you not familiar with the keychain, it's basically where you can store uh, securely values, things like passwords, and it's commonly used on both Mac OS and on iOS for um, things like that. So passwords, whether it might be something like a token for OAuth, anything you want to store securely, you definitely don't want to throw it into user defaults. You want to store it inside of the keychain. So we're going to create a brand new project here. I'll just give it a run in the simulator. And we're going to look at a very simple example of saving something to the keychain as well as retrieving it. So we're going to create a class at the bottom here below our view controller and we're going to call respective save and uh, read functions and view did load. So no UI today, strictly keychain only. So let me go ahead and create a class called keychain uh, manager and inside here we're going to have two functions. We're going to have a save function and we are also going to have a, uh, let's call it get instead of read, a get function. Now before I forget the various uh, keys we're going to need here, let me go ahead and just type them out and then we'll talk through the workflow of actually uh, reading and writing from and to the keychain. So we're going to need something that's a service, an account, a class, data, and we're going to want this here as well. We're going to want to match uh, limit and then we're also going to want, in this case, data will be return data and I'll explain these in a moment. So the way the keychain works is pretty straightforward. We're going to specify a service account and an actual uh, you know, piece of data, which will be the thing we save. So in this case, I'll go ahead and call it a uh, password. And this will be the three unique elements that help identify our item in the keychain, rather the service account and actual class here, um, because the password will be the thing we're actually saving. And similarly, when we're trying to read something or get something from the keychain, our keychain is going to use the service account and principal class that we specify to try to resolve it. So let's go ahead and create an enum in here also for keychain errors in case they do occur. Let me go ahead and call this keychain error. And we're going to want to guard against errors like uh, duplicate. Uh, duplicate entry if we're trying to save something that exists already for a particular uh, service and account pair. We're going to also have a unknown error where we can potentially throw a uh, error and it's going to return to us an OS status in case an error occurs. And let's actually fill out both of these functions. So first and foremost, we're going to want to have both of these functions throw a error if, uh, of course, one uh, occurs and the first thing we want to do in here is create a dictionary. We're going to go ahead and call this a query and it's going to be a string and here we'll have any object. Now inside of here we're going to want to put all of these keys which is why I listed them out for myself so I don't forget any. So the first thing we're going to want to do is say KSEC and we want a service here. So let me go ahead and find it. So we're going to want a uh, class. Let me actually just go ahead and do it like this very quickly so we don't forget any of these. We're also going to want a service and let's see if I can find it. I believe we can get away with the uh, this one here and these all need to be uh, casted as a string like so. Let me just copy and paste this a few more times and let's see what else do we need. So we're also going to want a account. This should be a KSEC uh, attribute account we're also going to want, let's see, we want the data itself. So we're going to want a KSEC data. So we don't want to return data. We want to have a, a value for data. The return data you saw there, we're going to have uh, in this function here since we know we want to return data. And what else do we want here? We're going to want the actual class. So we're going to say uh, we want the class here as well, KSEC class. And I believe that's all we need. So we've got service, accounts. Uh, our actual password will go into our data slot. We've got the class, and this is actually redundant here. So it's giving me an error here because we haven't actually filled out uh, values onto the right side in this dictionary. So for the SEC class, we're going to go ahead and say this is a K 
generic password, SEC generic password, SEC presumably for secure. And for the service, we're going to want this function to take in some arguments. So we're going to want to have it take in a service as a string, an account as a string, as well as password. And the password should be data. And we can simply encode this at the caller side of this function. But again, the service and accounts, they sound a little fancier than they really are. They're just strings that identify. Think of it as a key for the actual data you're saving. So for the service here, we can go ahead and say service as any object. And similarly here, moving on down for the account, we can say account as any object. And similarly, continuing down for the value here, we can simply go ahead and say data as any object. And we actually called it uh, password. So let me actually call it password here. And then finally, last thing here for the actual class. And actually, it looks like we got class twice. We don't need class twice here. Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something here, but we shall see. So looks like that's what we've got so far. We should see this error go away and turn into a warning like so. And now we actually want to execute this query, even though it's a dictionary, it's actually serving as a query for a particular function that we have available to us. And that function is sec item add. And this item add is going to take in a query as a cf dictionary. And this second argument here is going to be simply nil. We don't actually want to get any result outs. Uh, the reason we don't want to get any result out is because we'll get a status passed back to us uh, as a byproduct of calling this function. So let me go ahead and just line break both of these, make sure we don't have any silly errors. And now that we actually have this status here, we want to do a couple things. Um, we're going to say uh, if our status equals s error sec, and we want to look for uh, something that failed. So we have a bad request, we have success, we have, there's also one in here called duplicate. So what we want to look for is a duplicate item. If we find a status with a duplicate item, what we want to go ahead and do is throw the duplicate item or duplicate entry error here. So inside of here, we can go ahead and say throw this guy duplicate. And what we can actually go ahead and do is say guard that the status isn't the error for secure duplicate item. And that way it reads a little more cleanly. Now, continuing on down, the other thing we want to verify is that our actual writing to the keychain was successful. And the way we can do that is say guard that our status was in fact anything or was in fact successful. And in the case that it was anything other than the success, we're going to go ahead and throw a keychain error and we're going to go with unknown and we can simply pass in the status here and the type of status here is os status which is why as an associated value i've tossed in os status think of it as an error for all purposes uh, just to get started with keychain so that's basically how we save something so before we actually go on to the side where we read something we'll actually toss a print down here and say saved let's go ahead and actually call this function so once again this function can throw it's a static function and we don't actually expect to get anything out of uh, this function uh, if everything succeeds we'll just see a print statement so let's come up to view to load and in a do catch we are going to print out the error in this case and in this case we're going to go ahead and say try uh, keychain manager and we're going to go ahead and say save and we want to save to a service and an account and actual data. So now the service we're going to save to, let's go ahead and maybe say this is, I don't know, facebook.com. Let's say this is a service we're saving for. The account will be for me. And the password is uh, going to be data. So let's say we want to save a super secure password called password. Let me actually make it more secure and call it something. But of course, this is a string. We need to actually pass it in as data and encode it with UTF-8. Now, if this throws an error, we'll see it printed down here. Otherwise, we'll see this print message down here for saved. So let me go ahead and give this a run in our simulator, and we should see saved down here. Presumably, let's see if we're seeing it. I don't actually see it here, so let's see what is going on. We don't actually see it, so let me go ahead and add a print in here saying starting save. Let's go ahead and give this a run once more. 
And it looks like we've got a build error somewhere. It's not actually compiling, so let's see what's going on. All right, data using UTF-8. Ah, it's because this, in fact, is optional. And we want to pass in something that's non-optional. So we'll go ahead and coalesce it with the default value. And we see up here that starting save, and we get saved printed out. Uh, feel free to ignore all of my Objective-C nonsense in the console below it. But the important thing here is that we successfully saved. So now, if we go ahead and actually try to run this again, we should get the duplicate error thrown. And we in fact do, we get duplicate entry because we're trying to save again to this service account pair. And Keychain is basically saying, whoa, whoa, wait a second, you already have something saved here, we can't just blindly overwrite it. Now we get to the other part of this, which is reading data from the Keychain. And in fact, it's pretty much identical with a few minor changes. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, uh, let's see if I can actually get away with uh, copy and pasting this function and we'll tweak it as we need to. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste it. Let me go ahead and call this get. We're gonna get for a service and an account. And instead of uh, passing in data, we are going to have this uh, return data. Similarly, we're gonna have a query here with a class. Our class is also going to be the save value. We'll pass in service, account. Now instead of value data here, we're gonna say ksec return uh, data. And instead of this being you know, a password, we're gonna go ahead and say this is cf boolean true. So let's see if I can find it. So we're gonna say yes, we expect this query to uh, return data. And I believe we're missing one other thing. The other thing we want to specify in here is how many, how many things are we trying to match against? So we're going to say that our match limit as a string is going to be KC or rather K SEC match limit of one. And the reason we're going to use a match limit here is we're running this query against our keychain and we're going to say, we want you to match all the values or all the things that are saved against this query, but we only want at most one. So that said, one minor thing we wanna change here is if we fail to find a match, we wanna return nil. So let's go ahead and make that data optional. Let's get rid of this comment here. I'll also get rid of it from up here for just clean, cleaning up our code. And let's see what we need to do. So first and foremost, we don't wanna actually add an item. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna say SEC and we wanna copy something that matches our query. So we're gonna say item copy matching. And once again, this is going to be query as CF dictionary. And this other piece is important now because we wanna actually pass in a mutable pointer to our uh, thing that keychain, the keychain will put our result in. So here we're gonna say our result is going to be any object optional. And we're gonna pass this in by reference. So we're gonna say and, result just like that and our result here uh, should be data or nil if this succeeds and finds a match now we're not going to be actually checking any error cases in this case here what i'll simply do is just return the results now it's going to yell at me that hey you can't actually return the result because it's any object and we've specified that this particular function returns data so what we're going to go ahead and do is simply do a soft downcast to data, and if this fails, of course, we'll just end up returning nil, but at least our compiler won't yell at us now. Now, in terms of our status, we can simply go ahead and print out our status. The other thing we can do here is actually guard that the status isn't an error. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of brevity of this video, but we'll actually just print this out, and I'll actually say read status and interpolate it in here and let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see if we can actually read our super secure password out of the keychain so here we went ahead and actually saved something so i'm going to abstract this into this function here we'll call it save super creative i know and then we'll go ahead and create another function here and we'll get get password or we'll call it get password rather and inside of here we're going to use the same values for all of these except what we're going to do is we're going to say data is try from our keychain to get the password. And once again, the service and account will just be the exact same. If they're different, you won't actually be able to resolve it. So the account here, once again, will be me. And this function, did I make it uh, throw an error? I believe I did. We can probably get rid of it because we're not actually throwing an error in this case. We'll just get nil back. So. 
Uh, down here, we can actually get rid of the try keyword. We don't need this here at all. In fact, what we can go ahead and do is get rid of the do catch altogether. Now this function is going to return optional. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, simply uh, unwrap it with a guard statement. In this case, we are going to return and we're gonna say failed to read password. And if we do have data, what we wanna go ahead and do is get the password by converting it or decoding that data into a string. So we're gonna go ahead and decode said data using utf8 8.self. And by doing this, we should in fact get a password out. Let me make sure I don't have any errors here. And we can simply go ahead and print said password. And I believe this shouldn't give us an optional. If it does, we'll need to unwrap it. Looks like it doesn't. So we'll say red password here. We'll toss this guy in here. And let's go ahead and call this function and give it a run. So we're gonna say uh, get password and view did load. Go ahead and give it a run. And in our console, we expect to see, I believe we called it something. So there's our read status and there is our password. We actually went ahead and saved. Now it dawns on me that this read status is not very helpful. This is just printing out the uh, raw value of that particular OS status. So printing out actual statuses from the keychain uh, functions is not very helpful. You probably want to uh, convert it to one of your own custom errors and that's why we actually introduced this enum here. But I digress, we are successfully able to read and write to and from the keychain. So that's basically it. Just a quick recap. You basically want to create a query, which is nothing more than a dictionary, hand it into the secure item add function here, and just cast that query as a core foundation dictionary. That's what the CF is for. If you want the result of this, other than the status, you can pass an immutable pointer. We don't care for it in today's example. And similarly, forgetting the item you saved is very, very similar with the exception of you add a few more keys for how this query should match against values. You run a similar query, albeit a different function, and then you get your result out and cast it and decode the data. So that's basically it. Keychain in a nutshell, use it for passwords, tokens, anything that is super secure that you don't want getting into the wrong hands. That is all I've got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more stuff with Keychain. If you use it in your own projects, drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe to stay tuned for all the new videos. Hit the bell icon while you're at it. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.